So <laughs> we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna get this show started right. This guy you see now on Showtime, heard him on Sirius XM. Please make a lot of noise for Mr. Mark Yaffe. Go for Cisco, everybody. Let them hear it. Thank you for coming out tonight. Native in the house. Who is ready to party like it's 1491? Anyone? That's right. I'm the Indian portion of this. The rest of you, you're getting very sleepy, very sleepy. After the show, you will give back all of the land. And you will stop casting Lou Diamond Phillips as an Indian in your cowboy movies. I am not from the reservation. I'm originally from a small fishing village on the Pacific coast called uh, Los Angeles. <laughs> Born in LA, at birth I weighed in at 11 pounds, five ounces. Yeah, worst part was 11 pound head, five ounce body. I was a globe on a Q-tip. All my baby pictures, like, But my mom had an easy delivery because uh, I'm adopted. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Navajo, adopted by a Mexican mother and a Jewish father. I am a bargain hunter-gatherer. <laughs> and I'm actually considered an illegal in the native country because uh, you can no longer adopt an Indian child from their tribe. That is called the Indian Child Welfare Act. And they passed that law to protect our people from Angelina Jolie. <laughs> got on the Ancestry.com reason I was researching my family roots I got on Ancestry.com I found out on my Navajo side I found out my grandfather was a medicine man I was all excited I'm like yeah grandpa's a medicine man it turns out he's a pharmacist at CVS <laughs> people find out you're native they start asking all sorts of questions I got this oh Mark you're Native American I bet you're Children have beautiful tribal names. I'm like, uh, yeah, a little big mouth and Greta till summer. <laughs> oh, can you share some ancient tribal wisdom? <laughs> I, I just make stuff up like, yeah, ancient tribal wisdom. I'm, I've been through the desert on a horse with no name. <laughs> Felt good to get out of the rain. I actually asked me the other night after show, I said, oh, is it true you Navajos in your travels, you're guided by outer voices? I'm like, yeah, dude, it's called an OnStar navigation system. <laughs> I started messing with the OnStar the other day. You can change the voices, and they added a Nigerian guy to the OnStar voices. That guy tripped me out. He goes, you will go 3.1 miles. You will make a right turn into your bank parking lot. You will withdraw $7,500 and mail it to my uncle in Lagos, Nigeria. <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm the only Indian still always losing money in casinos. I suck. <laughs> I was out in Wisconsin a couple weeks ago. I performed at the Ho-Chunk Tribal Casino. I'm now an honorary member of the Ho-Chunk Tribe because I lost a whole chunk of money. <laughs> and these celebrity slot machines, have you seen that nonsense? Celebrity slot machines, Michael Jackson slot machine, Elvis Presley slot machine. There's a Britney Spears slot machine. They need, what they need is a Dr. Phil slot machine, right? Every time you lose, you're like, what were you thinking? <laughs> Even if you win, like, you still got a problem. <laughs> and if you're new to Las Vegas, you've probably discovered when you gamble that there are free drinks when you gamble in the casino. Free drinks in the casino, that is like uh, free blindfolds at a rifle range. <laughs> I had so many free drinks on Tuesday night, I lost $300 on an ice machine. I went to the roulette table, I tried to buy a vowel. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. No, what happens in Vegas stays on my credit report. Yeah, I'm going through a little fiscal difficulties because I work too much in Vegas and I have two daughters in college at the same time. Same time, I'm old enough to be the dad, I'm broke enough to be the roommate. <laughs> I went to a financial counselor the other day. He referred me to the suicide hotline. 
Visa called my house. Visa called my house. Hey, Mr. Yaffe, we haven't received your last payment. I'm like, sir, trust me, you've received my last payment. <laughs> I'm always trying to economize. I, I flew here on uh, the Southwest. Anyone else flying here to Vegas on Southwest Air Peanut? I don't know if any of you remember that old Steve Miller song from the 70s. I went from Phoenix, Arizona, all the way to Tacoma, Philadelphia, Atlanta, LA. That was my flight on Southwest Airlines from Phoenix to Los Angeles. We beat Greyhound by 10 minutes. The other day, I go to pick up my uh, rental car at the airport. I asked an attendant for an economy car. They gave me one of these smart cars. Has anyone else driven that Tupperware with wheels? <laughs> you don't shut the door, you burp the car. <laughs> yeah, a smart car, that'll go from zero to 60 if swept up by a tornado. <laughs> That's the most embarrassing car ever. I pulled up to a red light, two homeless guys came up and handed me change. Just pray you don't get an accident in a smart car. Instead of an airbag, a clown's nose pops out. <laughs> like a lot of natives, though, I did, uh, did lose my land and home to the white man, except in my case, it was my ex-wife's divorce attorney. <laughs> that was the second worst treaty ever. You lose half your stuff, you know that, folks. You get divorced, half your stuff. My Arapaho buddy, Ron Two Horse, got divorced. Now he's just Ron Horse. <laughs> Married 22 years. I got divorced after 22 years. We stayed married because neither one of us wanted custody of the kids. <laughs> Don't judge. You haven't met my kids, all right? We homeschooled our kids. We didn't want to contaminate the public school kids. It's... But I'll tell you what, Las Vegas, this homeschool worked out great. One of my kids was student of the month every time. You can motivate your kids in homeschool too. I'm like, hey, you want to be on that honor roll? You better get your butt out there and mow that lawn. And when you're done, get over to the home ec room, get daddy another beer. I'll be in the teacher's lounge watching TV. <laughs> yeah, their mom and I, we had a mixed marriage, a mixed marriage. Yeah, she's paranoid, schizophrenic. I am obsessive compulsive. <laughs> She'd invite over imaginary friends. I'd make them take off their shoes before they came in my house. <laughs> Our marriage literally went to the dog. She became a dog hoarder, my ex-wife, a dog hoarder. We ended up with 14 dogs. Yeah, she had these little dogs called Maltese. You heard of Maltese? That's a French word for craps all over my carpet. <laughs> Five pound dog, 10 pound dookie. And she had unconditional love for those little dogs. She didn't care if they crapped in the couch, barfed in the kitchen, humped the neighbor's leg. I'm like, I wasn't even allowed one of those things. She remarried within one year. That's kind of quick, within a year. But she didn't go for the newer, younger model. She married a 67-year-old drunk, disabled diabetic. He's not even a sugar daddy. He's an insulin uncle. <laughs> now, I'm back in the dating pool. I, I didn't know how to swim the first time. I hate dating. The rejection, the pepper spray, the <laughs> restraining orders. And if you gotta get back out in the dating scene, you gotta go out and socialize and mingle and party. I'm getting too old to party. Anyone else getting too old to party? Anyone else just turned 40 like 14 years ago? Anyone? <laughs> it's like back in the day, I would party like it's 1999. Now I'm peeing like I'm turning 99. <laughs> when I was in my 20s, I drink whatever I wanted to, eat whatever I wanted to. Now I look at spicy food, I get gassy. Right, when I, when I was younger, I would hold in a fart for weeks like Fort Knox, and now I'm ripping them like Looney Tunes. <laughs> One false move. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm the third leading cause of global warming. <laughs> Trying to stay in shape. My doctor says I need to work out more. He said I need to do more crunches. I showed him this morning I did Nestle's Crunch and Captain Crunch. <laughs> Very excited, I did my first marathon three weeks ago. Yeah, excited about that. No, no, don't clap. It was uh, six hours of Walking Dead, straight through. I... 
I didn't have to pee once. I am in shape. I do try to go to the gym. When I work out the gym, it's always awkward because I, I do, when I'm on the cardio machines, they have the uh, TVs, but they turn on the volume and they put on the closed captioning. I don't know if you've ever paid attention to that closed captioning. I don't know what three-fingered English is a fourth language Craigslist reject they hired today. It's hilarious, check it out sometime, seriously. I'm at the gym trying to watch the news and the CMM was retorting that President Brick Alabama would be mating with rushing ladder bad mere pudding over the Citra Asian and whooping crane. <laughs> President Obama was just down there in Cuba. You know, we're starting trade with Cuba. American Cuba are gonna be trading. Here is the trade I wanna see with Cuba. We get three left-handed pitchers, they get Kanye West and the Kardashians. <laughs> and while you're at it, throwing Justin Bieber, you're not even American, get his little Canadian Muppet butt out of here. I've had enough of him too. <laughs> that guy. This is crazy. My, my parents, my parents just celebrated their 63rd wedding anniversary. Uh, two months ago, yeah, 63 years. I asked my dad a secret to a long marriage. He goes, hearing loss. <laughs> 63 years, I didn't know what to get him. Been married 63 years. I, I figured, well, their two favorite hobbies are cleaning and driving slow, so I got him a street sweeper. <laughs> 87 and 89, they're heavily medicated. They spent a lot of time at the doctors. In fact, we had to change the voicemail on their answering machine. If you call their house now, you get this, you get this message. Hi, I reached the Yaffies. We can't come to the phone right now because we're on the phone with a doctor. <laughs> on the way to a doctor. Or at a doctor. If this is a doctor, please press one. HMO press two. Medical lab accessories house press three. If this is that pharmacist from Walmart, please hang up. We found cheaper prescriptions in Canada. <laughs> Please monitor your parents' and your grandparents' medication. The seniors have all the good drugs. It's out of control. My mom takes five pills. Just to remember to take her other 10 pills. <laughs> this lady has enough medication to stock three Charlie Sheen sleepovers and a Lindsay Lohan relapse party. <laughs> and I'm worried about my dad. My dad is exhibiting gang member behaviors, yeah. Seriously, he just keeps driving slower and slower. His pants just keep getting lower and lower. Forget toys for tots, we need straps for paps. Yeah, he is still driving, 89 years old. They just gave him a five year driver's license renewal. Way to go, California DMV. In fact, he had his first accident uh, back in March. Uh, while driving, he hit a patch of ice in Palm Springs, California. Like, Dad, how did you manage to do that? Run over a jaywalker holding a daiquiri? What? <laughs> to be honest, so I didn't believe he did, I can't believe he didn't crash sooner. Like every other 89 year old man, he can't see hardly anything because he has eyebrows like a woolly mammoth. Have you seen the old guys with the lobster brows going on there? My God, it looks like he gave birth to a pair of Brillo pads. It's like, mom, don't kiss him, you'll put an eye out. <laughs> and ear hair like Chia Pets. Like, <laughs> That's why the old guys don't turn their head when they change lanes. They can't see through that shrubbery. <laughs> old school parents. I got this gem from my mom. She goes, you were such a good baby growing up. We would take you to the beach and to the park and on picnics. We would leave you in the car. You wouldn't stir for hours. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Mom. I believe that's called heat stroke. <laughs> we had no protections back in the day, right? There was no CPS. CPS did for crazy parents screaming. <laughs> right? There were no rights when you were kids back in the 1900s. I had one right, the right to remain silent. Back in the day, the parents could hit us. The aunts, the uncles, the teachers, the neighbors. I think the mailman took a couple swings at me. Not only would they hit us, they could hit us with our own toys. How messed up is that? Our own toys, yeah. Anyone else getting a wooden spoon every Christmas? We can't hit our kids with our own toys. No, we're not gonna do that. Number one, CPS. Number two, we're not wasting a perfectly good $300 Xbox. Back in the day, we had no Xbox, we had cardboard box. Right, there was no weed, it was just us. 
and there was no ADD either because we had to play in the street. That'll make you pay attention. I couldn't wait for the street lights to come on. I was the worst live Frogger game ever. Toys that would kill and maim. When I was seven, they gave me a set of lawn darts to play with my seventh birthday. Here you go, knock-kneed, big-headed, nearsighted kid. Go throw these metal spears at your friends. <laughs> Our toys are like slip and slides and BB guns, slingshots, firecrackers. They had these things called click clacks. I remember they were two glass balls on a string. What could go wrong there? Everybody knew at least one kid with missing fingers or a glass eye. <laughs> and if you got that kid mad, he'd throw the glass eye at you. <laughs> Just locked out of the house. Had to drink hose water for eight hours a day. That was it. Come in the house. I'm thirsty, Mom. Can I get something to drink? Yeah, don't use a, a glass. Use a Dixie cup. Why, why can't I use a glass? I gotta wash all the dishes. I'm the dishwasher. I'd use a Dixie cup. These, for those of you too young to remember, Dixie cups are little paper shot glasses. I was a seven-year-old with carpal tunnel, chronically dehydrated. <laughs> 1900s. Kids are always I think kids were dying of thirst. We didn't even know of it. Serious. Children's party. Nine adults, 10 cases of beer. 23 kids, two gallons of watered-down punch. <laughs> Tasted like a used popsicle stick. Yeah, now it's, it's a different era, man. People are just into the television. I think TV's gone a little too crazy. You notice now, almost every group in the, whole, in the country has their own network now. Black folks, BET, Shoppers, QVC, uh, my people, Mexican, Irish, Navajos, uh, Court TV. Uh, uh, True TV. Yeah. I think it's time for all Native American television network. We'll call it like TPTV. <laughs> right, we'll have shows like Survivor Reservation, Wheel of Misfortune, <laughs> Whose Land Is It Anyway? <laughs> Come on, people, you can take a country, you can take a joke. Let's go now. <laughs> oh, man, it's weird, though, because uh, yeah, I'm guessing not too many of you have seen Native Comedian on stage, am I right? How many people, first time, seen Native American Comedian on yeah. Right? Because you know, you know, folks, we are only 1% of the population. 1%. I believe at one time we were like 100% of the population. <laughs> it's a little awkward sometimes. We go places people ne never met a native. They're not even sure how to react to us sometimes. I was out in Omaha, Nebraska, working with a couple of native buddies, and we're at the uh, university staying across the street, and the housekeeping staff heard where they wanted to try to bond with us, but they weren't quite sure how to make the approach. And my housekeeper came knocking at my door, 7.30 in the morning. I get this knock on my door, I get this. <laughs> hey, you guys are awesome. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you very much. Huh? Mark, you